Heyo, Hudson here with Planet 4 Gaming. I'm flying the J2M3 Raiden. Don't let this plane's adorable exterior fool you. Uh, it is a merciless killing machine. Yes, it may have a round stubby body and short stubby wings. And it, it looks very cute, but it is dangerous in the right hands. So, why is that? Well, it has a great top speed, better than most Japanese planes up to this point. Uh, the only plane that might be better is the Ki-84 Ko, and that's the only one that comes close. It is much faster than the Zeros, much faster than the ENs. Ki-43s, obviously. Um, it's got a good climb rate as well. Um, most, most of the time you'll start the battle above your enemies. Obviously, it gets an air start on some maps, but even if you're starting on the runway, you can probably outcline a lot of your enemies. And it has a great armament as well. Um, it has four 20mm Type 99 cannons. The big thing that sets it apart from other planes with this armament, like the N1K, is uh, that this gets high explosive fragmentation tracer rounds, and they do a ton of damage. I believe the N1K does not get those, but I might be wrong. Um, anyway, this plane seems to do more damage with its guns than most Japanese planes. Um, at least most Japanese planes that don't have 30mm cannons. Also, it's got a great high altitude performance. Um, this is something Japanese fighters have never had um, at this point until now. Um, yeah, obviously Zeros, KI-61s get kind of sluggish at high altitude, but that is not the case with the J2M. Here I'm in a full game, starting out at around, what, 6,000 meters maybe? Um, and it's good to gain a lot of altitude with this plane because it's more meant as a boom and zoom fighter. It can dogfight as a last resort, but it's not the best at that. So here I'm diving on a P-51, I get really high speed, um, not able to control it all that well and get a few shots off that miss. No problem, I can easily climb back up to a reasonable altitude above all the enemies and set up another attack run. And that's what this plane really excels at. So that Mustang just turned around, he's lost a lot of energy, he's got other other planes to worry about, and I've got my sights on him. Take a few long-range shots, get critical damage on the wing. He turns hard left, and I'm able to follow it reasonably well, but the rudder fucks up my aim. That's one of the biggest issues with this plane, is uh, the rudder kind of has a mind of its own, and it will try its best to fuck up your aim. And that's really something that you can only overcome with practice. Try not to depend on it all that much, and kind of try to predict what the rudder is going to do. And you can kind of compensate for it a bit. Its other problem is survivability, but that's something you're probably used to if you've been flying Japan <laughs> this long. So yeah, don't get hit if possible. So after that attack run, I do a loop, get on the tail of this Corsair, quick burst in his wing, and he's gone. Obviously, he was surrounded by enemy, uh, well, enemies for him, my allies, but they hadn't killed him, so not, not kill-stealing. <laughs> So now I'm just going to keep climbing. They're all running back to their base. They've lost a lot of planes in that initial battle. And I guess they're trying to make a final stand with their AAA helping them out. But it won't help them. You can't escape from Hudson. I will destroy them. So now I'm eyeing that Typhoon. He's going to turn back around and head back into the AAA cover. And I'm going to be going way too fast for AAA to hit me unless they're 
magical snipers as they sometimes are. Get a few shots in, a few more here, and it's a miracle he's still alive. Um, not really much consolation for him though because I get the assist immediately. One of my allies finishes him off. Now I'm just going to climb up again and set up for another similar run on one of these P-51s. They have a few planes left that aren't in the area, so after we get these Mustangs, there will be something else to worry about. Get the assist on the Mustang. I got the wing damage on earlier. Now I'm just going to loop around. And my allies get him, no problem. So, now there's two enemy planes left, I believe. I'll be coming up on one here. You can see him there. It's a BTD. That's just an RP pinata, to be honest. Um, it does have good maneuverability, and it has the two 20mm cannons, but it's a dive bomber. I mean, come on. It's no threat to me, but I'm going to take him out anyway, because that's the objective, and I want to get RP. We've got a J2M smoking, and the BTD has singled him out in a last ditch effort to get a kill. And that makes him an easy target for me. One burst sets him on fire, another one blows his wing off, and he's history. Good enough demonstration of the 20mm cannons, I would say. And now I think they're down to one plane. He'll be flying a Spitfire. Um, and I spot him at low altitude, trying to keep out of our sight. But he can't stay away from my eagle vision. So, how should you fly the J2M3? Obviously, this game, it, it hasn't seemed like I've been in much action, to be honest. It's not uh, grueling dogfights or anything. Um, and that's really how you should be flying it. Uh, staying out of danger as much as possible. Even if it seems like you're not getting a lot of kills, you're probably doing a lot to help out your team um, just by diving down on these American fighters and making them dodge you. That's gonna make them lose a lot of speed, which is the only real advantage the Americans have over Japan. So, don't, don't go in this plane expecting to Turn, fri turn fight right away. Like I said, it can do it. It's it's a modest turn fighter, I suppose. It's reasonably good, but not compared to other Japanese fighters like the Zeros, Hayabusa's, even the Ki-61 and Ki-84. It's not as good as those planes. So, spotted the Spitfire. He somehow made it back to base, I think, and rearmed. Uh, how no one saw him is beyond me. But he's at low altitude trying to keep his speed up. And he pulls a dodge, but it doesn't save him. I was reading that from... I, I was like 10 steps ahead of him there. I knew, I knew what he was going to do. So one quick burst destroys his wing. And that is a good demonstration of the power of these cannons. You don't have to do much to get a kill, or at least critical damage. Um, every plane I hit in this game I got crits on. Not not all of them were kills, obviously. I got two assists, but I did significant damage with just small bursts. Um, so yeah, that's one of the big things about this plane. So while it might not be the best dogfighter, it's a very good interceptor. There were no bombers in this game, but is very effective at taking out B-17s much more than the Zero, much more than the EN. Uh, it's just got a better armament. Um, and it gives you that like ability to boom and zoom uh, and fight at high altitudes that no other Japanese plane does. So it, it fulfills a role that maybe not every player would want to do. <laughs> 
Um, you kind of need to be more experienced when you fly this plane, I think. It, it takes a lot of practice, but it definitely does have a, an important role to play in Tier 4 battles for Japan. Just by supporting the Zeros, making the American fighters dodge you when you're above them diving in, it gives them a lot of breathing room and it kind of kind of limits the US players ability to just, to just run climb force head-ons whatever so yeah that is about all I've got to say about this plane I'm still still uh, learning how to fly it I think I've I've uh, gotten halfway to spading it I've gotten the new cannons I'm working on engine injection right now I think so I'm getting there. I'm not an expert on it, but I feel like it's a solid plane and I kind of know what I'm doing with it. So give it a try. Let me know what you think. Maybe maybe you want to use this plane differently than I do. Take a more active role in uh, helping out your team. Whatever. Let me know. Uh, until then, this has been Hudson with P4G. Thank you for watching and get the fuck out of here.